Now, whether it's for treatment of an ailment or, for, or, for, or to connect with a supernatural world, witchcraft has been with us in Kenya for more than a century, but it's still a very touchy subject. In Kisi County, the fear of witchcraft has over the years resulted in the infamous but now common witch hunting and burning of suspected sorcerers. Those accused are tortured brutally before they are set on fire in front of a whole village without any proof of their alleged crimes. But now some residents say there are other motives behind the killings of these victims. Here now is ATN's Ian Wafula with The Witch Hunters. The pathway to 22-year-old Meshak Monyangis' home is one full of uncertainty and tension. Whether he will open up to one of his biggest misfortunes and the genesis of the stigmatization he's facing is still unknown. Yet, we go on. Once in his compound, his mother's grave is what we encounter first, the very reason for our visit. Every week, he weeds it out. The only way to connect with his mother since her death four months ago, he says. And after a few minutes of convincing, he lets us peer into the dark memories. His mother had been accused of bewitching a young boy from the neighborhood. And because she knew she was innocent, Meshak says, she abandoned her farming tools and went to meet the same people being for her blood. <laughs> being a Sunday, the music from a neighboring church reminds Meshak of how an avid goer his mother was, rising to becoming a church elder. All she wanted was to prove her innocence to the mob. They brought her here, right at the center of the Nyangiti market. At this time, the crowd was massive. Yet Meshak's mother was stripped naked in front of her neighbors, relatives, and they began torching her. Those who attempted to save her were branded as sympathetic to a witch. Gory images taken by some of the witnesses at the scene show Meshak's mother begging for a hearing, crying out for her children, while her friend was already on the ground inhaling her last breaths. By the time the police had arrived, the two had already died from the stoning and the flames. Their bodies transferred to the local mortuary. When Meshak arrived from Narok, where he had gone for casual jobs after his high school, he would not be allowed to view his mother's body, but he insisted. 
kufikia hapo tu nilikuwa nimebeba na majonzi sio kwa naona vizuri na kwa sababu nilikuwa na uchungu mkubwa sio kwa tu naona yenye hata yalikuwa yanatendeka The days leading to the burial proved to be the hardest for Meshak and his sisters trying to raise funds and quorum for a proper send-off for their mother. Only a few relatives would show up. Neighbors and church members would steer clear. Since then, Meshak's life changed. He lives in fear, left all alone to take care of their home, while his sisters are at their matrimonial homes. And he's not to blame for his fear, though. He's now the sole owner of the land left behind by both his parents, land that he believes led to his mother's death. Before the fateful day, he claims his mother had been involved in arguments with her neighbors and his uncle over the boundaries to her property. In fact, he claims his uncle was among those at the scene while the mob attacked his mother, leaving him with endless questions. Meshak completed his high school education in 2013. His mother had supported him through his entire school life. Now, the money he gets from his farming isn't enough to see him through university. And as he continues to take care of his mother's grave, it feels sad and painful when I put myself in his shoes. Yet what I'm feeling is not even close to what he has felt for over the last four months. <laughs> Our endeavors later that day would see us join members of the Seventh Day Adventist Church in Mirani. Welcomed by its pastor, Ezra Ongera. The afternoon service here isn't ordinary, rather, a rehabilitation for sorcerers and their believers, as the pastor claims. Among those present are some of the very old who are said to be greatest of their time, now reformed. They come here to get encouragement from the preacher and his team. Yesu alisinda ujawi. Tunapo angalia katika kitabu ja numbers. Isirina tatu, fungo lake la isirina tatu. Inasema kwa luga ya kisungu. And just like an alcoholic anonymous session, the congregants give their progress while the new ones give their testimonies. Mali ni naisi. Tunaisi na wachawi. Walikuwa wananiweka kwa, kwa screen. Sikuwa ninarala, ilikuwa ninateseka mbaka, mbaka asubui. Wanaongea kila kitu, vile ninafanya kwa nyumba yangu, wanachua. Hata nyumba yangu nilikuwa napata madevo, wanarusha mawe, nikisikia ni mawe kwa mapati kuku. Sikuwa nalala, usiku, uyu mtota alikuwa naria mikono yaka, alikuwa na shida. Before the pastor can speak to us, he says he has to attend to a funeral service. We follow him, and here the messages are the same, condemning witchcraft. <laughs> The diseased, being mourned, is said to have died under mysterious circumstances. In his time in the ministry as a pastor, Ezra claims he believes in the existence of witchcraft more than ever before. Sorry. 
He claims that his aunt too was touched while he was young after neighbors suspected she was a witch. Nilikuwa na ubiri kule Bucha. Crowd ya watu zaidi ya 2020. Nilipohubiri nikakuta mama mmoja akaruka. Akaruka chu alafu akaanza kunena machina ya wachawi wengine. Ndio sasa akaniambia mimi ni mchawi, nimeua watu hawa na wale, tukaenda kwake tukatoa uchawi tukachoma. Pastor Ezra is a staunch believer in salvation for those who believe in witchcraft. Claiming that it is only a state of the mind. Alikuja kwangu akaniambia pasta uche kuniombea sababu nilipatiwa machi nikakunywa nikakosa kuongea na nilikutana na wachawi wakanibeba paka mahali fulani sasa aliponiambia namna hiyo tukapanga siku ya kwenda kuombea yeye tukapata amekufa sasa eh, watu wanapokutana na mtu eh, wanamgusa wanampatia wanamfanya sijui kitu gani wanatumia sababu mimi sio mjawi ni nieleze kuna nchi nyingine ambayo ni biological on the streets of kisi town matters witchcraft are a sensitive topic one that residents often shy away from mostly out of fear evidently though it sparks anger when brought up kama mjawi ameshiku acha chomwe Aji ile mambo ya kusema ati mashtaka mashtaka kwenda huko tena kufungulia kuja ni hiyo hiyo yanafanya tena lengo yao kuu ni kurudisha maendeleo nyuma kwanza kabisa wakiona mtu mwenye amesoma unapata metembezo wakitembezo wasubi unapata hana speaker yani yaongea yangi eh number 2 mtu ukiwa na vitu yako labda umenunua kitu ya maana huo mtu unapata mebadilisha umekwata kwa simu ubaya wa uchawi hawa ni yule ambaye analoka mtu anakufa ama anakuwa kitu kingine lakini kama wangepatiwa licenses kila mtu wachitokeze wa, wa kila mtu waseme mimi ni mchawe nataka nifanye uchawe wangu kwa aina hii community policing which were now elected and which Kisi County Commander James Akoru says cases of mob justice and witchcraft are not a new thing to him but it gives another perspective to the witchcraft narrative when you look it into it deeply you find that it has to relate with some cases of land This is an old mama who is sitting in this land and he has some men outside there uh, maybe grandsons and they don't know they don't have even a piece of land you find after investigation most of the investigation that are being investigated it is not about the witchcraft it's about the this land dispute they want to get rid of this mama so that they can get they can get a land but where are the police when the public killings occur they want to take this advantage that we believe that uh, any person found to be a witchcraft must be lynched that's not the case this is now what the people some people are still thinking and we are trying to move them out from such a such a such a thinking even if you tell them to report any witchcraft to the police they are not reporting there are no cases that somebody can come to police and uh, attest that this person is practicing this we could have taken a, an action against such a person We have been in Kisi County for the past three days now and we've really tried to understand whether witchcraft is real. Fortunately, we managed to secure a secret meeting 43 kilometers away from Kisi town with an alleged witch alongside with his group. This is a first time experience for me and I cannot lie to you that I'm not nervous. After walking for a few meters according to the instructions given we meet up with a group of five men who had been sent out to meet us Here one of them narrated about how well organized they are and the kind of activities they take part in a chilling narration hapo biti ukiweka uchafiki ni nini chafi ya kufunga kwa nyumba kutoka ndani hapo kifunga chafi saidi ya tano 
ni kuweka dawa na kuita unatoka una nje dakika mbili unaanza kukutoa hapa tu kupeleka hata kisi kupeleka hata Nairobi tena tukurudisha ukienda kutoa mwili kwa kaburi unaanza toa mwili na madawa unaanza simama kwa barabara weka madawa tuite hiyo mwili inakuja yenyewe mpaka mahali tuko na hiyo kazi tuko watu wengi karibu saidi milioni moja na hiyo kazi nafanya Kenya mzima watu wamechomwa juu ya ujawi na kiini ambacho kinafanya wao watu wanajomwa kuna siku zako 40 zinasafiri things are changing even the jaluos we used to inherit a wife plus you know have sex the same night with a dead body Dr. Ken Oko from the Department of Sociology and Social Work at the University of Nairobi says there are two types of witchcraft. One that involves treatment of diseases traditionally by the use of herbs and a more complex one that connects with the supernatural world. So sometimes these things happen in Sri Lanka. I know we also have cases where they can connect you to a lost, a departed soul. Then you have a conversation with a guy. He gives you directions if it's a spouse or a parent. And then after that you walk out and the story ends there. So most of it is make believe. Yeah, and a lot of it is something that you must internalize as a person. When you're going to seek these services, you must believe. Otherwise if you don't, they don't work for you. Ken says this kind of witchcraft does not exist in Kenya, while in the case of the Gusi land, he attributes this to upbringing. When they are socialized like that, the belief then is embedded into their psyche. So even if they go to school up to university, they'll still go back over the weekend and say, hey, um, my books are not working well for me. What's going on? You know, and he knows he's just being lazy. But they do that because it's been, they've been socialized like that. However, cases of witchcraft are not unique to the Kisi community. The Mijikenda at the coast and Kamba in eastern Kenya are just but a few communities where witchcraft is rampant. In fact, a hardly known and referred to case that shocked the Kenyan colony during the colonial years came from the Kamba community. That of the killing of Mwaiki by a group of men from her community. Mwaiki's murder saw dozens of Kamba men arraigned in court and charged under the Wakamba witch killing trials of 1931 and 1932. She had been accused of bewitching another woman in the village and the elders ordered her death. The case was heard at the Supreme Court in a trial where the accused defended themselves, arguing that they had a right as elders to flush out witches and killing them, quote-unquote, in the traditional way. The Nairobi Railway Social Institute was a theater where a curious public went to follow the case in which 60 of the 69 Kamba men from the original 70 were found guilty and sentenced to death. The trial attracted foreign media due to the number of those convicted. However, the accused appealed and the East African Court of Appeal overturned it, recommending the governor at the time to intervene. Governor Joseph Bine withdrew the death sentences to replacing them with prison terms and hard labor. They believe there are some types of social offenses that you cannot deal with legally. Because if you go and report a night runner, what do we charge him with? Maybe disturbance of the peace, you know, but that's not enough. He'll probably be thrown in for a week or two. So regardless of what the police say, regardless of what Tobiko says, it's going to be very difficult to hem in these things we call social offenses into the legal process. Very difficult. For years, groups such as Sungu Sungu and Chinkororo have been linked to the vicious killings witnessed in this area in the name of flashing out witches. While recent studies and books like From Monopoly to Oligopoly of Violence by Mutahinguni and Musiambai Katumanga indicated that the group have camouflaged in the name of community policing. The, the question we, we asked in our study was uh, between going to the police and going to the judiciary and going to the militia groups, where would you rather go to? First, we asked that question to the militia members who are part of our research team. And they told us, no, we actually go to the police first. 
but you go to the police to report a matter so that once we have sorted out somebody the police already know that we have done it wa sungu sungu ta sasa ma serikali isiingilia sababu sungu sungu inatusaidia sana mambo ya tuseme mambo kama wizi na mambo ingine sungu sungu inatusaidia sana ngende wa sungu sungu na zaidi wa haraka ngende polisi mara fanya hivi mara hiyo nakalizwa huko mwezi mzima bila kushughulikiwa lakini wa sungu sungu kama umekozana na mtu solution inatokea za hizo hizo when when you talk to the people in town or even in the villages they seem to be referring to the community policing as sungu sungu i found this rather strange do you think there's a connection between the two i think that's a, that's a wrong perception as much as as, as far as uh, the security is concerned we, there is no end relationship between the sungu sungu and the community policing the community policing that the people who have been elected who have been mandated by the law to partner with the police so that they can be easily uh, we can easily address the issue of insecurity within the community as to whether the groups exist or not is still a question but every often lives are lost without room for a hearing beliefs such as witchcraft continue to hamper development in different parts of the country with high levels of illiteracy hundreds continue to take matters in their own hands playing judge jury and executioner in a land where there seems to be just one sentence for person accused of witchcraft ian wafula ktn for the witch hunters